So, uh, welcome to Wildlife Encounters. My name is Derek. Uh, this is my actually my first summer as a wildlife educator. However, outside of that, I am an educator. I've been teaching for 25 years. Uh, right now, I teach grades one through eight. Every single, I'm getting my you need to make up too. Well, because I've got that one facing that. Whatever you want to do. This is clipping onto my shirt. All right, wherever I want to put it. Look at this. I feel like I'm on. The Today Show or something. <laughs> Probably get paid better. No, I'm just kidding. Get jokes. Edit that. Cut. Delete. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so I'm an educator. Uh, I love math. I love science. I love learning. I tell everyone, I do not know everything. <laughs> All my friends are like, you've been teaching science for years. What kind of bird is that? I don't know. It's not a penguin. It's flying. Okay? Uh, so I always tell everybody, hey, if I don't have the answer, it means you're probably asking a good question, right? As a teacher, I like people to ask questions. If we're not asking questions, it's not telling me we're listening or thinking, right? I tell all my students, if you don't try and answer a question or ask a question by the end of the day, you haven't done your job and you've, quite frankly, you've wasted my time, okay? How many of you have seen a wildlife encounters before by a show of hands? Wow, okay, we're like a town over. You should all have your hands up. Who, who has not seen us? Who's new? All right, I mean, you're going to touch an animal, you're going to touch an animal, and you're going to touch it. Ben, you're going to touch an animal today. Okay, excellent. So I do have a few rules before I get started. Um, we have all different types of audiences. I go to, like, you'd be surprised. We go everywhere. I told, uh, I was telling Shiloh, I was up in uh, Dover Fox Trot, Maine yesterday, which is like three and a half hours north. And then I drove all the way to Santa's Village. I had a real small crowd, tough to compete with the big guy, right? He's got reindeer and I got like porcupines. I was like, sorry, I tried. Not today, don't get excited. Um, so typically, sometimes we have smaller audiences and I might go to a senior center, of, so of all ages, okay? I think everyone's always curious about animals. We wanna see them, learn about them. So my rules before we get started, obviously you guys can try and stay where you are, right? So if you think about it, I have uh, I brought seven animals with me today. I I brought seven. You guys are good. Yeah. <laughs> um, these animals are some of them are very sensitive. It could be to movement, definitely to sound. So the, my biggest rule outside of all the moving around is keeping the volume quiet. Okay. Um, I like to give an example. I recently did a show. We took out a beautiful Arctic uh, fox. And I said, I need it super quiet for him. It got so quiet. And then I put him on the table, and then all, everyone was, uh, and he started pacing, and I was like, okay, sorry. Put him away. Huh. Nobody got to see him. And I said, I'm sorry, because you stressed him out, okay? So I am going to ask that we try and be relatively quiet. I will ask the audience questions. Just raise your hands, okay? And I'll be sure to call on you, okay? I don't give credit for just shouting things out. That's the teacher and me. It's probably the dad and me too. Sorry. I do have two animals at home. They're almost 15 and 18. And then I have my two little girl dogs that I love dearly. Okay. Um, and if I allow you to pet something, just don't ever pet on the face, right? Because what can we find on the face? A mouth. Okay? And I always tell people, I don't like hands in my face. Neither do the animals. Okay? So if we can all follow those rules, we'll have a great time. I will walk around with some animals. Please don't leave your seat and come follow me. I get that a lot, like like the Pied Piper. Um, I may not get to you. If I don't, I promise everyone will pet something cute and furry or scaly at the end, okay? If that sounds good, give me a head nod and we'll get started. Excellent. All right, um, so again, just to go back to those senses, we have to remember, you know, we live, uh, you guys are in Maine, but in New Hampshire, wherever we are, if I go hiking, it's really hard to find an animal, isn't it, right? They can smell us, they can hear us before, even in the woods, they're camouflaged and they're gone. So again, these guys are super sensitive. All right, let's get started. Uh, who's ready to see an animal? Raise your hand. Excellent, oh, raise your hand. If you're afraid you're gonna start talking, do what I tell my students, just grow a mustache, go like this. And then you won't talk, all right. Um, show me with your hands, folks. Would you like to start with something small or maybe something big? Let me see those hands. Don't don't say it. Show me. I'm a human. I'm a mammal. I got. I'm a great. I'm a visual person. So if you're yelling at me, I I, I got bad hearing anyways. 
Forgot to take the dogs out, the laundry, all that other good stuff. All right, I'm seeing a lot of big hands, so we'll start big, okay? We will, oh, we're not going to yell. Jeepers. All right, so um, typically try and bring some reptiles, some mammals, amphibians, and vertebrates. This is a cold-blooded creature. Um, it is a reptile. Can anyone name a type of reptile? If I don't see a hand, I'm just, yeah, I'm only looking for hands. Yes. A bearded dragon is a reptile. Anybody else? Ben? An alligator? Turtle? Good. I'm thinking of another one. It's kind of like a turtle, but not. A snake is a reptile. A tortoise. Yeah, so those are all examples of reptiles. I have a lizard today. His name is Zulu. He is from Africa. I am. I will bring him around, okay? Some of us will get to touch him. He's sleeping, <coughs> taking a nap. What are you doing, buddy? You want to come out and say hi to everyone? Huh? Of course you do. Of course you do. Of course you do. If we're going to yell, I'm going to have to put him away. He wants to come out and say hi and stick his tongue out at you guys. I don't blame him. I like to do it too. All right, so he is a black-throated monitor lizard. A lot of people think he's a... And want to tell me what they thought he was when they saw him? A Komodo dragon. So Komodo dragons are much bigger than this guy, right? Komodo dragons could be like 300 pounds, like nine feet long. Uh, Zulu is, let me take this off. Zulu is definitely much smaller than a Komodo dragon, but he will get bigger. Want to get down for a minute? You can let go of me. He probably doesn't like that table, but he also sticks to the, uh, the carpet. So when we do look at lizards, uh, we look at their length. We use the term SVL, so from snout to vent to their tail, right? So most of these guys, their body is the same length as their tail. So he's, what, about three feet long? So he'll probably double in size. He'll probably double in size at some point. Um, anyone want to guess why he keeps sticking his tongue out? Besides the lessons I give him in the car on the way here. I just put the mirror down. And he does it back. No, it's not why he does it. Anyone want, why do you think he's sticking his tongue out? Yes. He does it to smell. To smell, exactly, right? So we think of things, when, when things smell, so like yesterday on my long ride up to, to Maine, uh, way up to Maine, I would say, uh, my car started to smell pretty bad. That's the disadvantage of driving around the animals. I was like, someone passed gas, somebody pooped, something happened in there, right? So it probably happened in the back of the car and it's made its way to the front, right? So when you think about smells, there's little molecules of air that float around, right? They trap that smell and then they move it. So if I opened up a can of, uh, or a jar of peanut butter, you guys would smell, and it'd take a while for those folks back there, right? It would move around. So by sticking his tongue out, he could pull his molecules in, and he can get them to his nose, and then he could smell, okay? Uh, so he is the largest, I think he's the most massive uh, monitor lizard in Africa. Not yet, he'll get bigger. Uh, the longest is the Nile. Want to feel him? I know you're itching too, I could tell. Right? How's that? It is awesome, right? I feel? So listen, if, if I were to bring something around and ask you to touch it, let's remember for a second here. Is there a mouth there? No. So if I put my head there, can it bite me? No. no. So a lot of people, it's like tag, touch and go. They, they, ooh, <laughs> right? It's not going to bite you. You can pet it. It's okay. All right? Um, oh, I forgot where I was going again. So I would need my audience to help me. You were saying this. Yes. So he will get much bigger. Um, anyone want to guess what this guy eats? Anybody? Some people don't like to talk about the diet of wild animals because it usually involves other what? Animals. Wild animals. However, if Ben, if you and I, I'm going to keep saying your name because I met you when I got here. So now you're going to be all over the show. What's your name? Griggs? Briggs. I, my apologies, Briggs. So uh, if we went grocery shop, Sorry? Oh, oh, Riggs with an R. My apology. Okay. Bob's easier. All right. Um, if I went to Walmart grocery shopping, would I find food on the shelf for this guy? No. no. So he's got to eat something. What do you think he eats? I don't want to take a guess. Yes. Centipede. Centipede. So he might eat some insects. 
He might. I think his belly's craving something a little bigger than that, though. Right? Mice. Yeah, mice. That's what you're going to say in the back? He's, she took your answer. That's okay. That happens. People steal. Yes. Rats. Okay. So smaller mammals, possibly birds, right? This guy will probably eat almost anything he can catch, believe it or not. Okay? He's fairly fast. He can climb trees. Um, I think they can actually swim a little bit. Of course, they haven't gone there to watch or witness that. Um, he has a real interesting way of catching his prey. Okay? Anyone want to guess how he catches his prey? What do you think he does? Yeah. With his tongue. Go ahead. What? He uses his tongue? Um, he could, like, whip it out and grab him? Maybe. I think that would be kind of tough. I think he's just, like, sticking it out at him. What does he have that might help him? Hide behind a bush and then jump out? Like... Okay, boing, maybe. I don't know if lizard's boing, but I like that. That sounds fun. Yes? So he's got a real powerful tail. His neck is actually extremely strong. And he also has, anyone notice some sharp claws? He tends to scratch me quite a bit. Do you think it's on purpose? No, just the upper shoulders. That, feel, that feels good. Okay, so he might scratch me by accident. And what happens when we get a scratch? What happens if someone scratches you? We've, how many have gotten a scratch here? Everyone's gotten scratched on something, right? As you get older, you just touch anything and you scratch. It's fun. You little guys wait. What happens when you get a scratch? Young lady. What happens? You ever get a scratch? Yeah, what happens? What do you do when you get a scratch? Look, someone scratches you. What happens? It, okay, so it will heal up, won't it? Right? The human body is pretty amazing. So if I get a scratch, my brain's like, oh, there's a leak. Let's fix it. Let's patch that thing up, right? So with this guy, if he actually bites another animal, he has what's called an anticoagulant. So if he's chasing me, right, and he just gets a little nip of my ankle, but I get away, what's going to happen to that cut? Is, is it going to stop bleeding? No. So I could run forever. I'm going to run. I'm probably going to get tired. And this guy will just kind of slowly follow that trail. Come right over to me. Right? Everyone's holding their kids. He'll come right over and be like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Remember me? I'll be like, yes. Go on. Eat me. Right? So those animals will actually bleed. Uh, they'll actually bleed out. Okay? He does have these sharp claws as well. And those are actually for digging. Okay? So if this was a girl and she wanted to lay some eggs, uh, we call that a, a group of eggs we call a clutch. So if she were to lay those, she'd actually, she would dig up like near a termite mound where it's nice and cool and, and damp and there'd be a good place for those eggs to, uh, to grow and to hatch, right? Um, I like telling people, how, anyone here biomimicry? Only, I'm the only nerd that knows biomimicry. Oh boy, you should all go look it up. It's actually pretty exciting. So biomimicry means mimicking or copying life. Nature knows things better than we do, right? So the animals I have today, are they all going to be good pets? They could be pets. A lot of the animals we get sometimes are were illegal pets, and it didn't work out. So someone goes, yeah, I always wanted one of those. They're cool. And then they have it in their living room, and they're like, this isn't cool. <laughs> so what happens? They want to get rid of it. So we do get pets from that sometimes. We get pets that are injured and need rehabilitation. Or sometimes it might be from a breeder for the purpose of educating everyone here. Because do all of you, who thinks they impact the lives of all these animals that I'm bringing today? Anybody? Is anyone like, nope, my, my actions don't impact it? As people, do they? Sure they do, right? We definitely impact the habitats of all these animals. All right, Zulu. Anybody else want to say hi to him? Want to say hi? Yeah? There you go. An off-brand snake. I think you just insulted him. You're like the generic version of a real snake. That is, that's hurtful. That is hurtful. Oh my word, I can't believe that. You're like a, you're like, be nice to the monitor lizard. That's right, son. He is a cool guy, isn't he? He is pretty cool. Uh, so, people ask if he's venomous or poisonous. Uh, he is not venomous, um, to me at least. If he bites me, it'll probably hurt. He hasn't yet. Yes? Didn't you, weren't you looking at him earlier? No? Want to say hi? Oh, man, where's he going? Oh, dude. Okay. Okay. All right. Every day is an adventure with these guys. I don't know what's happening right now. 
I, I think this happened to Britney Spears once, but she she handled it much better, didn't she, everybody? All right, so we'll be ready to go back. I want to hear it. So not everybody will be able to touch every animal. Ugh. All right. You ready? Here you go. Is that cool? Yeah. 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 I'm gonna do makeup now. I'm good. I'm gonna keep referring to you just for fun. All right. What do you guys think? You like them? Pretty cool. Not a Komodo dragon. Those make. I saw a Komodo dragon vi video recently. Those guys go for like large animals. This guy does have some uh, predators. Not many. All right. Let's. Put that on nice and tight. All right, so why don't we go? So he's from Africa. I'd like to share with you one of my favorites. She is a local, everybody. A local. Ooh, wow, yeah. So this mammal is uh, from North America. She has a bad reputation. I didn't want to guess what animal from around here has a bad reputation. Normally, nobody has anything good to say about it. And I'm going to change all your minds today. All your minds are going to go... Wow, she's actually really cool and good. What do you think it is? Want to guess? It is not a porcupine. Not an alligator from North America? Well, yeah, we have them, but not in, not in Maine or New Hampshire. Unless they were like a pet and they got away. Yes. It is not a skunk. We're getting closer, so it's nocturnal. Who knows what nocturnal means? Who wants to impress their parent today? Young lady, what's nocturnal mean? Yes, animals that come out. So this animal is nocturnal. It's not a skunk. Anybody? Yes. Nocturnal me. No. You want to guess an animal? What animal do you think I have? It's not a skunk. It's another animal that comes out at night. The other day, this woman goes, "Oh, they're horrible. They're always in my garbage." I'm like, "Well, is it the animal's fault that it's hungry and your garbage smells good to it? Is that a bad thing?" No. Your Bruins fan. What happened, man? Tough year. Okay, go ahead. What? It's not a raccoon. I'll give you a hint. One more hint. It's got a long naked tail. Long naked tail. I'm just looking for hands. Yes, young lady. It is an opossum. Yes, and let's make sure that we pronounce the O and not say possum. Possum is an animal from Australia. I have an opossum. Her name is Gizmo. She is my favorite. I absolutely love her. Um, she would not make a good pet. I'd probably hold her in a way and make it look like a pet. I do not want her to be my pet. Okay? I mean, be deep. I'd be downside. Okay. Oh, she's sleeping. Why do you think she's sleeping? This is what she does. She would make a great friend for the couch during the day. No, we wouldn't do that. All right, Gizmo, you want to come on and say hi to everybody, sweetheart? Come on. So I've been working with Gizmo for a while now. So she's become she become accustomed to my noise, probably my heartbeat, my touch, my sound. Okay. Uh, when I first took her out, I'll tell you I had a glove. I was a little bit more careful. Not that I'm less careful, and I have to remind myself that she's a wild animal, right? So I'm not going to start giving her little smooches on the face. So why her tail always goes for the pocket? She wants to drive my car. Okay, here you go, honey. Shh. So why do Giz uh, why do Gizmo? Why do opossums have a bad such a bad reputation? Anybody? Why do they have such a bad reputation? This is one I cannot let you touch. I apologize. Yes. Why are opossums so bad? Tell me. Okay, but that doesn't really make them bad. Why, why do people not like opossums? Let me put her down for a little bit. Can someone tell me why people do not like opossums? Yes. Why? Disease. Okay, so who's ever heard that opossums have rabies? They do. However, most people can't get rabies from opossums, so they can carry it. However... In order for us to have a virus and get sick, it has to get in your cells and multiply, right? So her body temperature is a little cooler than that, which doesn't allow for that replication. So it means you most likely cannot get rabies from her. So let's say there's like 500 people that get rabies this year from in Maine. 
it's probably probably one or small handful from opossums. Okay? So yeah, they do carry it, but they're not giving it out. Raccoons, skunks, other animals, it's going to be a problem. So what else? Besides rabies, is there something else that's bad about her? Anybody? Anyone know anything? Yes? What? Reputation. They're mean. Does she look mean to you? Who thinks she looks mean? Anybody? No. Shh. She's not mean. So there's actually something really good about opossums. So they like to eat something that we find in the summer around here. Moms and dads do not like them. There, are, Some people are like deathly afraid even though they're like that big. Does anyone know what I'm thinking of? That these guys like to eat? Sonic? Ticks. So she'll eat like thousands of ticks over the summer. How many of you would like an opossum that lives on your property and when you're tucked in your bed at night, she's walking around patrolling? Yep, got it. Got it. Got it. Who would like that? Raise your hand. Yes. Does that change a little bit of your thoughts about opossums, everyone? Maybe. Okay. So... As I said earlier, this woman said she's always in my garbage. Well, she has to eat, right? She might have babies she has to feed, okay? So if she goes and finds a frog or a mouse, some bugs, whatever it may be, maybe some fruit somewhere, who knows, um, that's all she has. She's not going to go to Market Basket and go to the opossum aisle and get a can of opossum food, right? She has to eat. So is it my fault that my garbage is out there at night and my leftover Italian chicken parm smells good? Is she going to want some? Do you blame her? No, right? So it's not her fault. So the other thing you'll notice about her, she has that prehensile tail. Everyone see that? She has that awesome tail, a prehensile tail. Who's ever seen an opossum hanging from a branch sleeping? Maybe not in real life, but in a book or a movie? Guess what? They don't do that. Yeah, stop watching TV. <laughs> so she can only hang from this tail for like 15 seconds or so. It's not that strong, okay? Uh, she will use it for balance or grabbing bra uh, branches or sticks when she's climbing. The other thing I want to show you about her, it makes her quite interesting, is on her hind feet, she has what look like thumbs, right? I believe they're called the hallux. It's actually like a big toe, and that allows her to grip trees, especially when she's climbing down a tree, right? As humans, if we try and climb a tree, we have to use all the muscles in our arms and legs, right? It's pretty tough, okay? Um, in my pocket again. So... She will use those sharp claws, and she can grab to go up a tree and down a tree. There's something else that makes her really unique about being a mammal in North America. She is the only marsupial that we have in North America, right? What does that mean if she's a marsupial? Yes, do you know? She's not a kangaroo. Oh, I just became unmiked. Oh, boy. I'm going to get in trouble. Sorry. Sorry, I'm hiding behind the tree. No, no. Anyone know what a marsupial is? What do we know about kangaroos? Yes, they can jump high. She's not a great jumper. Yes. Yeah, they have a pouch, so she carries her babies in a pouch. How many of you did not know that mammal? Uh, this mammal, this uh, oct uh, octopus. Oh my gosh. Hey, someone among the ducks, get me caught. No, just kidding. Shh. This opossum has a pouch. And believe it or not, when she has babies, her babies are like the size of a jelly bean. The size of a jelly bean. Those babies are like this big. And after they're born, they have to find... You want to talk for the audience? Hello, hello. Oh, nope, don't eat it. It's not a blueberry. It's going to get me in trouble. Shh. So those little babies that are that big have to find their way into that pouch so they can get milk. Okay? So they can survive. She is also one of the oldest mammals we have in North America, like 70 million years. They've been around a long time. So lots of trash cans have been picked through, not just yours. Don't complain. Okay? Does anyone feel a little bit differently about our opossum after seeing her? How many of you kind of changed your mind like they're not so bad? Anyone still thinking, nope, don't want one? It's okay. I won't. Shh, don't listen. Don't listen. It's okay. Shh. Okay. All right, any questions about Gizmo? Oh, Gizmo does not have eyes. Did anyone notice that? You probably can't even tell. Gizmo actually does not have eyes. So she relies heavily on her sense of smell and hearing. Whereas many of us, we rely on our sense of sight, don't we? Okay? I always tell my students, listen, 
we do not smell as nearly as close as animals. I mean, if you guys take some dog crumbs, cookie crumbs, and drop it in your house, your dog doesn't look for them, right? What does it do? It smells. So she has a pretty good sense of smell. Ready to go back? Oh, question? Someone in the back? Yes. She does not have babies right now. She's uh, So she came to us, obviously, because of her, her injury, right? Also for us to educate. Um, she, I think we've had her for a couple of years. Unfortunately, opossums do not have a very long lifespan, right? And you go, sweetheart. There you go. So one thing they do like to eat is carry-on. They like dead animals, right? Where do we find dead animals? In the road. Does she look both ways? No, she doesn't, okay? Um, so one thing I didn't mention, and most of you are like, hey, didn't talk about, she likes to play a possum. Everyone here playing a possum, playing dead? So she doesn't do that on purpose. How many of you boys and girls have a phone or a tablet? Yes, I got my first phone when I was 30. Look at you guys, you're kidding me. All right, listen. I have a tablet. So how many of you have, is, is it supposed to be away when you go to bed? Right? Who says yes? Young man, you probably have a phone. Right? Yes, you. Is it supposed to be put away? You're probably old enough. She's like, I, I let him do his own thing now. I get it. I've, my son's almost 18. Okay, so if you're on it, right, and the door opens, right, what, is, what do we do with it? It goes under the pillow, and what do we do, everybody? We pretend to sleep. So opossums actually do not pretend to play dead. It's not a game. They don't see, a, I mean, they'll do a couple things to protect themselves. They might urinate, they might make noise, they might growl, they might make their body look big, right? She does not play dead on purpose. She Actually, it's involuntary. You know, your heart's beating right now, your eyes are blinking, you're not thinking about it, right? If we did, we'd get nothing done all day. <laughs> we'd be tripping over things, like we have our phones in our hands. So it's actually involuntary, it just happens. So if she sees a big animal, she just kind of goes, Poof. down she goes, right? Uh... They say their tongue hangs out of her mouth. I've never scared her enough, nor would I do that. But they they give off a smell. Their heart rate slows down. So if I'm a bigger animal and she's playing playing dead, I go over to her. She's not going to smell good. She looks like she's dead. Some animals like to eat things that are alive. So would I touch her? No. I go about my business and like two, three, maybe even four hours later, she's just like, whoa, what happened? Right? I don't know if they remembered or not. <laughs> They're just like, okay, I'm, I'm back. Something happened, <laughs> right? Any other questions? Yes. Um, what happened to her eyes? Uh, so I believe that was a result of an accident, like a, a road accident involving the mom and babies and stuff. So unfortunately that happens, right? Okay, so that was uh, Gizmo. Let's see. Let's go even smaller. Can we go smaller? All right. Smaller, smaller. I had a girl yesterday that said, this is the first girl I've ever met, said this is her favorite animal. I don't know how that happens. Maybe there's a book out there. Hope something's in here. All curled up and defending itself. I don't want to guess what this little guy is. It is... It's not a snake. It's not, it is a millipede. Excellent. Come on up. Want to be my volunteer? Yeah. Look what happened. You talk and now you got to do stuff. All right. Come on over here. All right. So that, you want to hold it for a minute? Sure. All right, hands out just like that so we can all see. So that is a millipede, okay? Anyone know anything about millipedes? This is not just any millipede because why would I bring you a millipede? Do we have millipedes in Maine? Sure we do, except they're super tiny. Usually they're always curled up because that's their way of saying don't touch me, okay? This is a giant African millipede. Let's see if we can get him to come out. Want to put your arm up? Will you let me let it crawl on your arm? You can say no. You don't care? Oh, I love it. All right. What's your name? Wyatt. Not Riggs with an R. I remembered. Okay. All right. Wow. Are you going to come out and say... That's just soil. So it's not like... It, it does poop, though. I asked it to go before he left. I asked all these guys to go, and then we get places, and they're like, I'm sorry, I couldn't hold it. Let's get, is he going to come out or what? He is like in uh, a, a sleeping state. You good? i to walk away for a minute. Don't let him drop. Okay, got him? All right. So this is a giant African millipede. Uh, these guys walk on the rainforest floor. They are uh, nocturnal, so they come out at night. 
And all they eat is dead plants. Look at <laughs> cover. Ugh, they're not so bad, right? So I like to have here. Put that arm out straight. Let's see if we can get it to walk on your arm. I like to have people see how these legs move. So it's a millipede. Millipede or milli means one thousand. They do not have one thousand legs. Okay. Oh, I wanted to see that wave-like motion. Maybe he'll come to me. He wants to go into your shirt. I'm not going to let that happen. All right, thank you. Here, grab a seat. Good job. All right, nice job, Wyatt. So uh, it's not a bug, by the way. It is not a bug. Want to feel it? Yeah. So, by the way, if you touch it, is it going to bite you? No. The only way it would bite me if I had my finger near its head, but guess what? Their mouths are so small, it's not going to bite you. Who knows what a centipede is? Okay, so centipede begins with what letter, everybody? S. C. 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 Where's the librarian? <laughs> Centipedes begin with the letter C. So think cent. Cent, like how many cents are in a dollar? 100. How many years in a century? 100, right? A centipede, cent stands for 100, okay? Centipede also has a C, which think of carnivore. Centipedes are flat, and they're carnivores, okay? Millipedes are herbivores. All this guy eats is dead plants. He eats them, poops them out, and makes new soil. That's all he does. It's not so bad, is it, right? It's like touching like an uncooked piece of pasta or like a flexi straw. Right? It's not so bad. So this guy is about six inches long. He will probably grow twice as large, so he might be like a foot long. So it is uh, an invertebrate, so it doesn't have a backbone like the rest of us. Did I lose my mic? No. So its skeleton is on the outside, right? However, it's not a bug, everybody. What do we know about insects? What do you know about bugs? How many legs do they have? They have six legs. Thank you, Sonic. How many body parts? Three. Good job. Okay. So this guy has all these segments. You can see all those little line segments. Every single one of those, it has two pairs of legs. How many pairs of legs do you have? One. Good job. Two pairs is how many legs? Four. So every time you see one of those lines, it has four legs for every one of those lines. So you can go four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. Should we stop? Yeah, we'll stop. So this guy probably has 160 to 200 legs. Okay? That's a lot of shoes, ladies. It's a lot of shoes. Right, kids? Every soccer season, you're buying 160 new cleats. Be thankful we don't have millipedes for kids. Right? So this guy does have an important job. Walks on the on the rainforest floor at night, eats, makes new soil, eats, makes new soil, eats, makes new soil. It's important. Okay? What do feel? Oh my god. Everyone know what the wave is? Who knows what the wave is? Yes? Alright, everyone put their hands in front. Okay? So when I point to you, you're gonna lift your hands up. Ready? We'll go from here all the way to there. See if we can do the wave, everybody. Ready? And go. Hands up, 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 up. Oh, and you ready? We'll go back. Ready? Up. Up, 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 up. Look at that. So when you watch his legs, I was trying to get someone to demonstrate. Young lady, come here, you want to help? You sure? Your eyes were like, no way, dude. Here, put your arm on. You want to let this guy crawl on you? Want to try it? You okay? You can sit. Come on over here. Love it. Girl power, just like your shirt says, honey. All right, let's see if we can get this guy to crawl on you and we can all see that awesome wave motion. I'm not touching you. Oh, see it? I'm not touching everyone, who see, everyone see that wave motion? Nope, nope, turn your arm there, sweetheart. <laughs> nope, nope, what are you? Oh, my goodness. You're going to get me in trouble. Edit the tape. All right, get out of here. <laughs> so when they move their legs, it's actually like a wave-like motion, okay? Uh, we breathe through two lungs, right? These guys have little holes all along the side of their body. They breathe through those. So if they get a good rain one night and he's sitting in a puddle, what's going to happen? What will happen if this guy is in a puddle? He'll drown, right? Not a good thing. 
So this guy is not venomous. He's well, he's not venomous because he can't bite. Um, he probably does release a little bit of uh, toxins to anything that wants to eat him. A lot of bugs will do that. A lot of in, uh, invertebrates, they'll get rid of a smell. And they'll go, no, don't want to eat that. Because we like to eat things that smell good, right? Exactly. So, giant African millipede. Anyone else? Let's see. You guys want to feel it? Come on, Ben. It's not going to bite you. Briggs, what do you think? Tell him, to, tell him to touch it. It can't bite you, dude. can't bite you. Come on, Ben. No? Oh! Guys, want to feel them before I put them away? It's like touching like a piece of plastic. Right? Want to feel them? So this guy will curl up in a ball just like the millipedes around here if he needs to protect himself. You've already felt them, haven't you? <laughs> Want to feel them? Say it again. Say it louder, for everybody. It feels so. Is it slimy? Is it gross? So these guys are super strong. Think about it. So he could take the whole front of his body and arch it up. So if you guys lay on your bellies on the grass, on the ground, you could probably lift yourself up a little bit and you'll get tired, right? So if you watch this guy, he'll arch his whole upper body up. He is very strong. I feel. Kind of feels like plastic. Yeah, we'll get one more. Yeah, not so bad. Last one. You want the walk on you? All right, let's see if we can get him to do the wave for everybody. Yep. If it doesn't happen, you're gonna we'll have to talk afterwards. Okay. You, you prepared for that? I love it. All right, let's see. Really want to <laughs> Can we take him? No? There you go. He did walk on you. All right. He put that guy away. So he's from Africa. Africa? How about we go to South America? Who'd like to go to South America? So this is a mammal, but it looks like a reptile, okay? Am I good? All right. And I also got a oh, let's see here. made a lunch So everyone, this is Spalding. He has a sister named, uh, oh my God, Gertie. So this is Spalding, okay? Want to see? So I, I can't let you touch this guy, but I can let you certainly look at him. Normally I take Gertie, but Gertie's out on a show today, so I have Spalding with me. Spalding is a three-banded armadillo. Okay, I think it's one of the most impressive pieces of of uh, life when you look at what it can do. Kind of looks like a little cantaloupe. You can't pet this one. Okay, can I get a photo? So it's a three-banded armadillo. This is the only armadillo that can actually roll up into a ball. And when you look, you can see the top of the head and the tail going like perfect right next to each other. It's like impressive that nature knows how to do that. Spalding likes to stay in a ball. He feels safest like that. Maybe I can get him to come out. We'll see. So there are, I think there's over 20 species of armadillos. This is the only one, again, that can roll into that nice, tight ball. It doesn't roll, by the way. Okay? Oh, he's starting to come out and say hi. He's looking at that three, three sugars and three creams. That's what he's looking at. <laughs> Just kidding. So, uh, three-banded armadillos, not in North America, so Central and South America, probably Brazil. Okay? She's a mammal. Kind of looks like a reptile, so she's, or he rather, this is Spalding, I'm just taking Gertie, sorry. He's covered in these three bands that allow him to curl up, okay? Um, when these guys have babies, they'll look like little golf balls. They actually come out like that. Pretty cool. I don't know if they roll out like out of a gumball machine. I have be kind of fun to watch. I know, I'm just kidding. Um, so she is uh, nocturnal, okay? 
She likes to eat bugs. But he, thank you, it's Spalding. I t I, I've taken Gertie out like a hundred times, so i got to remind myself it's Spalding. So obviously his main line of defense is this shelled system around him, which is made of keratin. It's the same stuff your fingernails are made of, everybody. Okay? So this is made of what your fingernails are made of. Okay? So he'll come out a little bit. Maybe I can get him to come out if we set him down. Oh. Want to come out? Oh my god. <laughs> See if we can get him. He actually moves in like little spurts. So he doesn't have great eyesight. He has uh, good hearing and sense of smell. His front, uh, what I would call his front limbs, have these really long, sharp, that look like claws almost. And those are for digging to get at like bugs and termites. Um, obviously, that's not a, a means of defense, okay? Um, so if he was trying to protect himself from a predator, he would curl up in this ball, but what he'd actually do is he'd leave a little opening in there. See all those hairs? Nice and sensitive. So if those hairs sense something, what's going to happen? He'll close up. Who's ever slammed their hand in a door or a, a drawer before? Painful, right? So normally after the door slams, you open it, right? Guess what happens? No, no, no. Spalding will leave a little opening for that predator, like, oh, I can just get my claw in there. And then what happens? Whap! Slams it shut and stays shut. I would love to touch that soft tummy, but I don't like the idea of walking around with an armadillo stuck to my fingers. I think it would hurt, right, everybody? I just think it's an impressive uh, piece of nature. So they do have predators like the rest of us, right? Could be a wild uh, wild dog, could be a large bird of prey. What's that? Uh, I'm not going to put him right in front of you. I can, I Let me put him up here and see if we can get him to come out a little bit. Want to show him what you can do, Spalding? Can you move around? He's got these really neat little, so they're also known as a uh, four-toed armadillo. Wow. They move actually quite well, don't they? They move quite well, okay? But again, it's just amazing to look at the armor that he has on his head, that tail. It kind of looks like something a dinosaur would have. Here, I'll bring it out back so everyone else can get a chance to look at this guy. Some of you got here a little bit later. Oh, sorry, sir. A nine-banded armadillo is not going to roll up. This is the only one that would. That's right. <laughs> Got those little ears. And again, all it takes is a little bit of touch to get him to seal himself up. Just like that. Hi. There you go. Yeah, they are kind of cute. However, would they make a good pet? Probably... No, you said awesome. Did I lose my... There we are. So, as far as these guys at night, when they sleep, they'll find, like, an abandoned den. Um, they're not actually, uh, I guess you'd say, energetic enough to go and make their own. So, they'll find an abandoned den, and they will uh, bed down in there. Do you guys see it over here? Yeah, he's kind of cute. Right? Anyone else want to get a good look at him? Oh. I like to look at those little feet that come out. Maybe. I'm not going to tickle them, though, Maybe. right? Maybe. No, I can't let you pet this guy. We always have a couple we can't pet. The opossum's a no, and the armadillo, unfortunately, is also a no. Yes. All right, let's see. How about, ooh, this guy. All right, so I also brought an amphibian. Normally I bring CT, who's our giant cane toad from South America. He's like that big. He weighs like three pounds. He can weigh like five pounds. Instead, I thought I'd bring something different. So who knows the difference between a toad and a frog? Anybody? The difference between a toad and a frog. You could guess. What's the difference? What's different, You forget. That's okay. A toad has something that can squirt out at a dog? 
White, oh, no, you're right. Yes, so they can release some toxins from their skin. Frogs. Is, does one, do you find one more often near water, everybody? Yes. Sure, frogs, right? Toads, not typically in water all the time. One of them's actually a better jumper. Which one? Take a guess. Frogs, frogs are better jumpers, right? And the color, frogs. right? Frogs, you see lots of green. So I did bring a frog today. This is a giant African bullfrog. Is there anyone who would like to hold my friend Jelly Belly? Who would like to hold Jelly Belly for me? I like to hold him up like he's Simba and show everybody. Make him feel good about himself. Poor guy. You want to do it? All right, come on up here, Noble. You ready? So I do have to ask first. So whenever I hold amphibians, because their skin is permeable and stuff goes through it, right? What is something that we put on our hands a lot? Soap. What else? Yeah, and water goes with soap. What else? On a sunny day, what are you going to put on? Sunscreen. Uh, what do some people like to put on to stay soft? He's giving you all the answers. Just, don't, just you and me. Just block, block them out. Uh, what did COVID give us that everyone loves now? It's everywhere. Oh, it out. Don't forget to do this. Hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. So if I'm going to pick up Jelly Belly or any of our amphibians, I don't want any of that on my hands. Because if it's on my hands, where is it going to go? It's going gonna, it's gonna to permeate through that skin. So I actually like to have dirty hands. Are your hands dirty? You're like, I don't want to tell people that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm dirt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, all right, ready? This is Jelly. Is he a big frog? Yeah, he better be. He's like a giant African bullfrog. All right, so you're going to just put your hands under like this and cuff him and hold him up. You got it? You good with it? What's your name? Dylan, D-Y-L-A-N. As a teacher, I love to spell the names. All right. You want it? Like Simba, show everybody how beautiful he is. He is a new leader of our kingdom. Wow. Right? Can you get your hands underneath him a little bit so we can show? What do you think? Does he feel like a bag of jelly? We call him Jelly Belly. Is he cute? Let him sleep on your pillow? Maybe not. Is he bigger than the frogs we find around here? He's definitely bigger. That's right. All right, nice job. Thank you, Dylan. So this is Jelly Belly. Shh. So a good rule for amphibians, everyone. So, yeah, you can touch them. So a good rule for, yep, stay there. Don't come to me. Remember, I'm not the Pied Piper. I'll come to you. So a good rule for amphibians. Number one, we make sure our hands are almost dirty. Does that make sense? Do we want lotions on our hands? No. If you do have sunscreen, there's a sunscreen that we always recommend everybody have. Does anyone know what that's called? Bullfrog. <laughs> Bullfrog, that's good. <laughs> That's, uh, that's, yeah, no, Reef Safe. Reef Safe. I know, uh, listen, I'm a parent. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, nope, doesn't work. Don't get that. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a lot more brands. So if you are using sunscreen, make sure it is Reef Safe. Um, I, don't, I don't really find him to be that attractive, but I sh I'll say that. Don't get any closer, she says. Want to feel, wanna feel him? I do. You want to hold him? Young lady, just want to touch him. All right, come on up here. You can hold him for a minute. So normally as a good rule for amphibians, here, come on up here, turn around. Shh. Normally we say like five seconds. We can all count to five, right? I'm going to hold him a little longer than I should. I'll be honest. Normally I like to pick him up and put him down. You ready? Put your hands together. He's not that small. Cup. A cup. Like that. Bigger. He's bigger than, look, he's got to be bigger than that. Want to hold him? Come this way. Beep, beep, beep. There you go. Ugh. He'll just kind of settle in there. What do you think? You like him? What do you think he eats? Bugs? You think he eats anything bigger than a bug? What do you think? Do you think he'll eat just bugs or maybe something bigger? Probably something bigger. So a lot of amphibians, if you touch them enough, a lot of them have toxins that can, they can release. They'll irritate your mouth or any other animal. You want to say hi? I'm not going to let everybody. Not everybody's going to be able to hold them, okay? 
So if an animal were to put him in his mouth, or any other animal would, they typically don't last long because these guys, through their skin, they can release some toxins that will be bothersome, all right? Uh, my dog, actually, anyone's dog ever catch a toad? Doesn't keep it in its mouth for long, because what happens? That toad kind of foam, yep, gets rid of some toxins that irritate it, and then the dog spits it out. So my dog did that. Did she learn her lesson? Yes. No, she didn't. I think she ate the same toe the next day. I think she waited till 1 o'clock to let me know, by the way, in the morning, in my bed. Gotta, gotta love dogs, right? Yes, question? No, you just want to touch them. You want to touch them? You want to feel them? Just a big old, big old gross. Ben, are you afraid of the frog too? You better not be. You're not afraid of this guy, but the guy that doesn't have a mouth, you're afraid of? We got to Feels like a what? <laughs> so this is Jelly Belly. He is our giant African bullfrog. So he'll actually eat believe so eat other small frogs, lizards, mice. He'd probably eat a bird if he could catch it. Okay? They have pretty big bellies. They do have teeth. A bite would hurt. So we mentioned uh, poison, we've mentioned venom. Does anyone know the difference between poisonous and venomous? <laughs> Anybody know the difference? Who wants to... Oh. You look pretty confident over there, Mom. Alright, hang on. We got an answer. Mom, what is it? What's the difference? That's right. That's right. So everybody make the letter V for me. Yeah, I know. Go grab a seat, honey. I will try and get around. Everyone make the letter V. Okay, so V for Venom. Turn the V upside down. Oh, he just peed. Awesome. <laughs> Ask you to go before we leave. Thanks a lot. Gross. Not as bad as a giant cane toad. It really, it's like two cups, I swear. So, V is for Venom. Turn upside down, it makes fangs. Remember that. So if something is venomous, it has to bite you to get sick. If it's poisonous, I have to bite that animal. So if he's venomous and bites me, do I get sick? Yes. Yes, I do. If he's venomous and I bite him, do I get sick? No. If he's poisonous and he bites me, do I get sick? No. No. If he's poisonous and I decide to eat him, do I get sick? Yes. You bet I do. Okay? So poison you have to ingest. Remember when we were kids, like this is for the adults, the bottle with like the skeleton and the crossbones? I don't know who actually had that bottle in their house, but I probably wouldn't want to drink out of it anyways, right? So poisons you have to ingest. So we have snakes. They're non-venomous. They're not poisonous either, but nor would I be wanting to bite any of those, okay? All right, you ready, Jelly Belly? So by the way, he does have some yellow coloration underneath him. Lots of animals in the wild have that yellow color hidden. And then they show that to kind of surprise or shock the predator. So believe it or not, even the porcupine, we have a porcupine at the facility. So I pulled his tail one day and while well, I was told to, not mean, I wasn't being mean. So I pulled on his tail and all of a sudden all his quills went up and, and what did I see underneath? All this bright yellow. So you think about it, I'm a predator and I sneak it up on this green animal and all of a sudden he flashes the yellow, it's like, whoa! And that scares me enough and gives that guy time to escape, right? Yes. I, I, honey, I know, everybody wants to. He's, yeah. So you know what, at my school I do our morning announcements, right? You have morning announcements at your school? I do them on a video, right? I have a green screen and they're live every morning. And do you think all 450 kids want to be in that show? Every day, every kid, first day of grade, I want to be in the video. Sorry. All right, so I have two more left, which uh, everyone will be able to touch on the way out. I promise you that. Uh, let's start with this one. No, let's start with this one. Sorry. Jackie, can you edit that out? No? <laughs> Having fun with Jackie back there. All right. Big, furry, cute, fun. Everybody loves that, don't we? Right? Yeah. Let's do it this way. All right, Maggie. Maggie is what we call a giant Flemish rabbit. These rabbits could be as big as the table, and they can weigh uh, upwards of uh, 40 pounds. This is Maggie. Hi, Mags. 
Oh, there's Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> so Maggie is, yes, she's a giant Flemish rabbit. She's got all that hair, look, underneath her chin. So she'll actually, moms will use that to help make their nest for their babies. So they'll take their mouth and pick at that and pull that out, okay? So these guys were actually raised uh, in Belgium, and it was for hair and meat, obviously, right? Uh, of course, Maggie's like one of our pets. We're not going to do that. So on the way out, everybody, we could we could form a nice line. Maggie should be staying on the table here. You can come up and pet her. Where are we not going to pet her, everyone? Yes, yes. I had a child that was going here to pet, so I did this, and what did Maggie do to my finger? Chomp, chomp. She's just her way of saying, get out of my face, okay? So Maggie will be here. Um, let's see. Want to help me out, young lady? Yes, you. No? You don't want to help me out. I do. Let's see. Briggs, come on up. Want to just stand next to her? Right there for now. You do that? Stand right here. You can just pet her, okay? You got it? You good? All right. So... I will have Maggie for everyone to come up and say hi towards the end. And you like her? All right. I also have another reptile that most people are afraid of. But you don't need to be. This is Wilma. Oh, yo. Wilma is a, a uh, type of python from Australia. Okay. She's. She, she can hear you. She is non venomous. You guys have to remember when I, we have animals, any animal, right? When you get them stressed, they respond in different ways. If you got her upset, would, would you want her to bite me, would you, right? So, non venomous, she's a restrictor, right? A constrictor, so she'll normally bite a hold of her prey and wrap around it, okay? Um, I think more and more I'm finding, especially for myself, as I visit people with snakes, the more you get used to it, the more it's like, oh, it's not so bad. And I, you, we have to remember, do these guys serve a purpose? They all serve. So all the animals I brought to you today, they all serve a purpose in the wild. I haven't figured out what mosquitoes are doing. I don't know if they're helping me. I, I need. If anyone finds out their purpose, please let me know, besides keeping me from swatting at them, right? Those... Riggs, you all done? You all done? Ben, get over here. Ben, you're helping. Okay? Make Maggie feel safe at home. Can you do that for me? So, snakes, by the way, they serve a purpose. Yesterday I had Hercules, our Burmese python. He's like 10 feet long. He's like that big around. And people were so afraid. So if you go to a pet, Wilma, by the way, can she bite you if you touch her right here? No. They are extremely smooth, nice. They're cold to the touch. Okay, they have all have different markings. They're beautiful. I think if you guys come up and you want to say hi to Wilma, one thing. So she's a smaller snake. I'm still not going to put her where around my neck. So the larger snakes typically when we carry them, grab a seat on. So the larger snakes we would put them over one shoulder and underneath. The, she's actually too small, but I would actually hold them like that. Right? Does that look a lot safer? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, this is what I'm going to ask. So I'm going to hang out for a little bit. If you guys, maybe we uh, can kind of walk this way. We can walk in through the tent on that end. If you guys want to say hi to Maggie and meet Wilma on your way out, you can do that. You guys want to enjoy the show today? Excellent. My name is Derek. I hope to see you guys again. Have a great evening. Yeah, if, if anyone wants to see the pets, please walk around that way. Okay. Get behind Benny. Yeah. Oh. So, my name is Derek Papacino. I've been doing this. This is my first summer, as I told everyone when I got here. So, it's my first summer doing this. So, um, I'm a 25th year teacher. 
So I've taught grades. Uh, I've taught from first grade to eighth grade. So I enjoy, obviously, uh, talking to kids and adults and teaching. Um, you know, and for me, it's the learning part. You know, it's just a lot of fun. But I think uh, bringing these animals around and just letting people know that you know we're all we're all in this place together. We gotta we gotta do the little things we can to kind of help. You know, even like our possum who's local. I mean, getting people to change their mindset. You know, they see some of these animals and it's like, Ugh. I mean, the snake, for instance. I was not um, really not not that I didn't like snakes. I was afraid of them. But now the more I've handled them and I've been around them, and you see. I mean, obviously, these are snakes that go to shows, so it's not like you're gonna go to the wild. I don't obviously recommend anybody treat them like that, but, um... most unusual um, I mean some of these are pretty like people know the three-banded armadillo I think she's you know he actually is unusual uh, we have thorn that's a monkey tailed porcupine that is just, he's got this huge nose and this big long tail I mean he's beautiful um, I mean the mo we have a fennec fox that is popular I mean, they live in the desert and, you know, they're like two pounds, huge ears, but they need it like, and so far I've, I've done a good job of letting the audience like, listen, if you want to see, you know, uh, Radar, or, you know, our Fennec Fox, you have to be a nice, quiet audience, right. you know, right. um, and like I always tell them, you know, if we, we go for a walk in the woods of Maine and New Hampshire, it's hard to find nature because they, they smell you, they hear you, and they're going to... They're either gone or they're gonna hide on us, you know? So having these guys in a crowd of, you know, 100 plus people, um, it's it's hard for them. These guys, they're, they're good. I mean, they've done the shows before, you know? So yeah, it's my summer helping out. Okay. Uh, so I will miss it terribly, yeah. but it's definitely like a full-time, almost a full-time summer job. I mean, we travel, um, I travel to Mass quite a bit. Um, I haven't gone to kind of get a Mass, right around Boston area, we do a bunch of shows down there. But like I said, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine, so um, we, we do travel quite a bit. You know, I don't know if there's a lot of outfits like us that do what we do. Um, not quite. You know, we're very fortunate. We have some, uh, you know, Derek Smollett runs it. He's, you know, he's, he's built this business up, I think, over the last 20 years. You know, and working with these animals and getting to know them. And we have a great vet that works with them and just people that know how to care for them. Um, in a way that's most appropriate, you know, because we're not a zoo, you know, yeah. it's tricky. Yeah. Even my niece is like, you have a giraffe? I'm like, no, no giraffe. And people see the banner, you have a cow? No. So we have, yeah, we have a facility in Rochester, and uh, there's land that's been purchased in Barrington, so the goal is to hopefully have a bigger um, facility where people can come instead of, you know, the, the travel. I mean, I enjoy the traveling, but it is it's hard on the animals, you know, so. <laughs> I mean, we hear a lot about the climate today, and we don't always mention all these. I mean, you do hear about climate change and species, but I think we can all, you know, all do our small part, even in our own little community. We can do things. Um, you know, I was telling someone I teach, and I like to say kindness over curriculum, like just being good, good, good people, good stewards, you know. Um, it's about that. Well, when you look at Maggie, Maggie's being good. All right, girls, ready? Oh, 
You don't have to touch the snake. I want to touch it. All right, come on over. Yeah, you can go. You're very yeah, so squishy. I, I didn't. I don't know what I thought, but it wasn't that. It's very soft. Yeah. I mean.